So let's talk about lithium, the first line treatment of bipolar disease. Now lithium is also called a mood stabilizer. And what that means, I mean, it's kind of in the name. So we are talking here about this extreme mood swings, like in bipolar one. And what we want to see is that we go kind of to a more normal level. So we stabilize the mood. And you can already imagine it's not going to be easy. And that's why it's also very difficult to treat, because you need to treat mania as well as depression. And so lithium is one of the few drugs that is be able can do that, although we also know that lithium is much better to treat manic episodes than the depressive phases, the phases of depression. Now, how does lithium work? Mechanism of action? Well, it's really unknown, so I don't want to give you any proposed effects because you're not going to be tested on it. It's not going to be on any board exam because nobody really understands. It's a monovalent cation, so it's handled in the body similar to sodium, and it's really very difficult to understand how it stabilizes the mood. It has a lot of adverse effects. Now, one way to remember some of the adverse effects are the so-called LMNOPs for lithium, so LMNO. P's for lithium, so L stands for lithium, M stands for movement problems, and what most people develop under lithium is a tremor, so very characteristic. N stands for nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, diabetes insipidus, and that's the body's inability to concentrate urine. So you're going to lose a lot of diluted urine. So you're going to see that with polyuria. And why is it? Because I mentioned lithium is handled similarly in the body as sodium. So sodium, uh, lithium gets into the ENAC channel and then it interferes with ADH, which is this hormone that is very important for concentrating urine. So it interferes with it, so you cannot concentrate urine, you're going to end up with polyuria. Then O4 hypothyroidism, because the lithium is incorporated instead of the iodine into the thyroid hormone. That's why you end up with hypothyroidism. And then pregnancy, no, because it can lead to a lot of abnormality in the fetus, particularly also heart abnormalities. So this is a drug that is absolutely contraindicated in pregnancy. Okay, a couple of other characteristics, PK. Lithium is handled like sodium in our body, so it's renally, renal elimination. So you have to be very careful in terms of renal function of your patient. So it is filtered freely like sodium and then reabsorbed in the proximal tubal. So if the kidney's kidney function is not properly, then you're going to have increased levels of lithium, which can lead to lithium toxicity, which is dangerous. We're going to get to that. So, renal elimination. That gets me to the contraindications, CI for contraindications. So, in a renal disease, you need to be very careful. In patients with thyroid dysfunction, you have to be careful because of the interference with lithium and the thyroid hormone, and then also in pregnancy, we already said you cannot give these drugs. So contraindication also in pregnancy. Now another very important characteristic of lithium is that the blood levels need to be monitored. Regularly. And that's very important. There's even a black box warning on lithium to say 
serum lithium concentration monitoring required. So that really reminds us we cannot just put a patient on lithium and then say, see you at one point. So you need to really regular check for the serum levels because there are so many things that can influence serum levels. And the ones that we're mainly going to think about is sodium because it's handled similarly in the body. So you can imagine that they kind of compete with each other. So you always need to check out for sodium intake and water intake. So that's something in terms of patient education that needs to be fairly constant. So lithium has a very narrow therapeutic index. What does that mean? That means that the dose where you see toxic effects or significant adverse effect is very close to the dose where you see effective therapeutic effects. And that's why we are worried about toxicity, because those doses are very close together. So as it relates to toxicity, we distinguish between acute toxicity. How does that show? Here we see mainly GI symptoms in the beginning, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. And then you're going to start seeing neurological symptoms, tremor, ataxia. Whereas chronic, just your tremor gets worse and worse. Also ataxia, so this unsteady gait also gets worse and worse. So that's, as it relates to toxicity, what we are very concerned about. How can we avoid that? Well, we need to make sure also in terms of patient education that the patient is not volume depleted. That's why uh, water intake is important. So how can we precipitate lithium toxicity? Precipitated by volume depletion. So when the patient is dehydrated, then the lithium is even more concentrated in the body. That could be facilitated by diuretics, for example, thiazide diuretics, diuretics, or for example, um, also NSAIDs is a dangerous interaction. I mean, that's a fairly common used drug class. NSAIDs are going to reduce renal blood flow, so there's less coming through the kidney, so you're going to have less clearance, and therefore you're going to have increased levels of lithium, so that's another one to watch out for. But generally, just check water balance. If you have anything that dries you up, it's going to be dangerous, and anything that interferes with renal function so that you cannot eliminate the lithium as well is going to be very dangerous. That finished up lithium, so you can see a lot of problems with the lithium, but it's a very good drug. You just have to be, um, it has to be monitored carefully, and then a lot of patients will have beneficial effects. I'm not going to talk in this video more about anti-epileptics and the antipsychotics, as they will be discussed in another video, but I want you to know that these are alternative treatments for bipolar disease. So you need to know the three anti-epileptics, carbamazepine, valproic acid to be used in bipolar disease, and then you can use basically any of the antipsychotics. You should not use clozapine because it has so much problems, but any of the others, preferentially second generation, can be also used to treat bipolar disease.